Hello, happy Tuesday, happy day before Valentine's Day, uh, in, in, ca in case you celebrate, um, or in case you're forgetting that you usually celebrate tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Um, all right, so today we are talking about book descriptions and an update that Amazon just made to their page, which may seem small, but I think we want to pay attention to it. And we're going to cover all of that uh, in, in detail today. Um, but while we wait for folks to join in, I see Stella, Kevin, I see John Butler, Caitlin, Duncan, all in the house. So welcome. Do say hello when you arrive. Um, and so now let's dive into a couple, or not dive into, let's uh, pull out your pen and paper and mark down some dates that you might want to know while we give folks a moment to join in. Um, so first of all, Saturday, we have our February deep dive happening. And this one is uh, back by popular demand. There were many of you that were saying, are you going to do your cover design trends and interior layout trends uh, again? because last year our team did a fantastic session kind of going through some of the cover trends because just like you know any kind of design there's things that are in style at the moment and then there's also considerations that are more classic so if you have a book that is going to be on trend you probably want a trendy cover but if you have a book that you want to have have more of an evergreen long lasting uh, kind of message and feeling then that's a consideration that you want to take into account when you're looking at your cover. So Saturday at 10 a.m., so that is uh, Saturday the 17th, I believe. I've been getting my dates a little mixed up, but I think it's Saturday the 17th at 10 a.m. To get registered, you do need to be a newsletter subscriber, and then um, we'll be sending out a reminder tomorrow and then also Saturday morning. So even if you're watching the replay and it's Thursday and you're going, I'm not on the newsletter list, well, you still have time to get on the newsletter list to get your registration link. To get on the newsletter list, the simplest thing is just go to booklaunchers.com forward slash newsletter, and that will get you in and get you the invite to our cover design and interior trends. And you do have to be live to participate. Uh, we do we do usually record it and we post that for our clients, but you do have to be live. Um, and you can always uh, email Angela and try to sweet talk her into you know selling. <laughs> for a small fee selling you uh, a copy of the live but uh but in general it is for our clients and uh and so you have to be live to learn otherwise the replay is only available to to the clients in our um our foundation library um all right so a couple other announcements we are now offering audiobooks as well as author websites uh, so normally this is also something we only ever offered for our clients but my team has put together um, you know the processes to be able to offer this to people who are not uh, part of our full service clients and so if you are interested uh, I believe we're still building the web pages so that you can just go to the website and buy this so in the meantime you can just email Angela at team at booklaunchers.com and she'll send you the information. So the audiobooks, we can help source a narrator, but our package actually just includes getting voice coached, helping, you know, test a studio if you're if you're renting a studio or testing your home studio, and then the editing, production, upload, your audiobook cover, those kind of things. And our author website has a couple of options. So if you're interested in that, it's best to reach out cuz there's kind of different details of what's included in in each of the options. Uh, next up, we have Self Publish and Succeed Live, our next class, our 12 week class, where we help you get your first draft of your book written. Uh, that is starting on March 18th. So um, if you're interested in that, go to selfpublishandsucceed.com forward slash live class. Angela will be putting those links in the comments if you're trying to keep up with all of the things that I'm throwing at you right now. And, uh, and this is, like I said, it's a 12 week class. It's been a blast. We actually just had a launch, I think it was last week or the week before from last year's class. Uh, so he drafted the book through the class, you know, went through our editing process, design process, and now it's launched. So that's exciting. Um, and the last thing, it doesn't really impact those of you who are not clients, but for it's still exciting for us. And I think in general, we are rolling out the beta tests on our client portal. So uh, what that, we've been building this software for longer than I thought it would take, but my understanding in the software world is that's kind of normal, is it always takes longer than you think it's going to. But um, our portal, we have a really robust system behind the scenes. I don't even know how many tasks or all the things involved. 
people like Caitlin and Angela, they're in there every day. And so they could better attest to the robust nature of our system of processes to help people write, publish, and, and promote their books. Um, I don't even log in because there's there's too much, too much there for me. But uh, to date, that is only for us to see. And our clients can't see what's going on on the publishing side. They have to rely on us to update them. And so this portal is going to provide a view, just like it's called the portal. It's going to provide a view into where their book is at, what we're working on, what the due dates are, you know, what the calendar is, you know, a progress bar for how far they are away from launch and things like that. So it, I think it's going to be really, really awesome. And I don't know um, if any other company has anything like this. So I'm also really excited just for it to be, you know, something that we offer that nobody else does, because I also think we have probably one of the most robust processes behind the scenes um, in, in this industry. So we're starting beta testing and all of our clients hopefully will be on it um, in March. So yay. All right. Book descriptions. That's what we're talking about tonight. So um, Amazon made a change. For those of you who weren't here right at the start, Amazon made a change to how their book descriptions are showing. I'm going to pop over and show you a couple examples so you know exactly what I'm talking about in a second. You used to have to read, click, click read more to see it um, and see the rest of the description. But now you land on the book page and de depending on how long the book description is, you see it all. So what does that mean for you? Well, I'm going to break it down a little bit more in detail, but the big thing is to realize that your first impression is no longer the first line or two of your book description. The first impression you're making is a full description. And so book descriptions were always something that the majority of people scanned. They didn't read it line by line, but now that's going to be really important that you're paying attention to how it visually looks beside your book on the page. So I'll take you over there and show you an example um, in a second. Let's see who else is here in the meantime. Megan's here. Katie's here. Hello, Marcus. Uh, great to have you here. Efren's in the house. Actually, Efren, I've got your book queued up as an example here. <laughs> so glad you're here. Um, and let's see. Um, let's see. Self-publish and succeed the musical next year. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there'll be no musical if I have to sing. That would uh, that would not be a good feature. Okay, let me attempt to share my screen over here. And while I'm doing that, uh, make sure you have said hello because we'll be putting all those names automatically. Everybody who comments automatically goes into a StreamYard giveaway. Uh, so uh, StreamYard, because that's where I'm shooting this from. And I just press a button and it randomly uh, produces a winner. So make sure you have said hello. You can do that while I am attempting to share my screen. Okay, let's go on over to Amazon. Let's see. Okay. This, one moment. It's not there, so it might not be open on the right tab. Okay, not now. It should be. Okay, it should be working. Try one more time. Present. Mm, I do not know. Let's see what this does. This could be scary. Hang on. Hang on for a second and see what this does. Nope, that's not right. That did not work. Okay. Uh, well, hold on a minute. This usually works. Pardon me. This is where I wish I could turn over. Angela, if you were here, you could take over and do a prize while I was having some technical difficulties here. I'm not sure why it is not letting me show it. I might have to... Okay, I'm going to try one thing, and if it doesn't work, I will just start describing it, which isn't as fun for you. Um, okay, so um, so what it is, is there is a, so you used to have to click. So on the top of the book description, you would, you would see the title of the book, you would see the subtitle, then you would see the first couple lines of the book description, and then it would say, read more, and you'd have to click that part. Now you're seeing a big, big chunk of the description. And depending on how long your book description is, they may or may not see it all. And so I'm actually thinking, and I don't know this for sure, this is just kind of my thought, 
but I think there's probably an advantage to having a slightly shorter book description where somebody doesn't have to click read more to go to the very end. So uh, because that was what I was going to show is we may want to trim some of the book descriptions. I don't know this for sure, but I would think that people, when they can see the majority of the book descriptions, are not going to click over. So I'm not sure why this is being so difficult. I'm going to try a different browser and see if that works for me. Um, so let me try that. And in the meantime, okay, Efren, I'm going to bring up yours again, Efren. Okay, now StreamYard, cooperate with me. There it is. Okay. I do not know why it would not share Firefox, but it would not. Okay. So I'm going to bring up Efren. So normally when you would click on this before, what you would see is basically this, and you'd have to click read more. Now you are seeing a bigger chunk of this. Um, if you go into a different format, you're seeing a bigger chunk. You know what? In different browsers, it shows different amounts. That's interesting. Um, cause I'm in Chrome now and in Firefox and Safari, it was showing even more, but you can see for the different formats, it's showing different parts of it and you still have to click more in Firefox. I was getting to the bottom of these bullets, uh, in Firefox. So I think it's going to depend on your screen size and your browser, how much it shows regardless, it's showing a lot more of the book. And so if you go to or the book description, I'm going to go to one of mine here and let's see how much it shows of this. Okay, so paperback. So in Chrome, it's not showing the full description. In Firefox, it shows the full description. So this is important for a variety of reasons because you want to make sure that it's scannable. It was always important for your book description to be scannable. But when I look at this, what I think is missing from my own description is some bolding so that I can scan these bullet points and pull out some bolding really fast. And, and I think that would help it stand out. You know, right here, you can see the first sentence should always be a hook. You can write a book, anyone can. That is the hook. And then it's going to go into some of the pain that people experience when they're trying to write a book. And it's going to go from there. And I'll walk you through kind of the elements that a good book description should have. And then I'm going to take you, if, if this will let me, I'm going to take you into a tool that will uh, that I use sometimes when I'm just playing with this and I wanted to just play with it while we were here together to see how you can improve your formatting without having to know coding. But then also, you know, it has a button that says, can AI make this better? And so you can push that button. So if I can get StreamYard to cooperate, that is what we will do. Um, if not, at the very least, I will help you walk, I'll help you walk through some key elements for your book description so that you are able to, you know, look at your book description with new eyes, knowing that you're not just the first couple sentences aren't the, going to be the thing that has to sell the book. So, or at least sell them so they click read more. You've got more space there that you really have to focus on and think about how can I make this really easy to scan so somebody can pull out the selling benefits. So um, just kind of breaking down a book description for you, thinking about how that first sentence really needs to hook the ideal reader and even disqualify somebody who is not your ideal reader. Because again, your book is not for everybody. So figuring out who your book is for and what why they really want to read this book right now. Again, not why they would read the book, but why they want to read it right now. And again, disqualification can be a powerful tool for that first sentence or the first couple of sentences. Then for most nonfiction books, and I say most because memoirs will follow a slightly different format, but the next couple of sentences should really push the pain buttons. So what pain are they feeling? What have they tried that hasn't worked? What's going wrong? Like, what are they up at night worried about trying to figure out the next steps or that, you know, the things they tried that didn't work and why it didn't work? Uh, you want to lay that foundation so they feel a bit of pain and they're like, OK, yeah, this hurts. And and so then they're reading the rest of it, looking for the solution. Then you also have to have a line shortly after the pain and kind of offering the, of the solution. There needs to be a line that says why you are the person. So that credibility piece, you know, in, and it kind of lays out, okay, this is why you're the person that has a solution that's going to help them with this particular pain right now. 
And then you want to have bullet points. And each of these bullet points, it's so important to make sure each is going to be giving you credibility, um, but ideally selling your book with curiosity or value statements. And being specific is important. And your, your bullet points don't have to summarize your book. In fact, your whole book description should not, the objective is not to summarize your book. The objective is to sell your book. So just like a good movie trailer, you may only highlight, you know, a third of what's covered in your book, but it's those juicy bits that you know are going to make somebody pick up this book and read it. And if you put generic stuff on there or general sounding stuff, it's going to read like something they can get from another book. And they probably have already read another book in this space. So you want to pull out those really cool acronyms or those really interesting facts or counter statements, those things that are the hooks of a chapter that you have written. Um, you know, I always go back to uh, the one chapter in Self Publish and Succeed where I made up a random number of how to save 1,412 hours writing your book or something like that. And it's a made up number, but it was all about writing a book outline. And so, you know, it's one of those things where that pulling out an interesting number or an interesting fact or a counterpoint and making it stand out. And that's where I think, you know, with my description, I would probably go back and play with it and see if I can find some really not keywords from an SEO perspective, but keywords from a reader perspective and draw their attention into those particular things with those bullets and then end with a call to action. And so now that I see, because I hadn't actually opened a book description in Chrome, I'd only opened it on my phone and on Firefox and Safari, um, you know, it may not be possible to put it all, the book description in a space that would be fully seen on those browsers. But I still think you want to pay extra attention to those first two, three paragraphs in the start of those bullets, because on most of them, they're showing. And that's what's going to sell your book and your and use your and really make your book description stand out. Um, OK, so um, and Angela is saying screen size plays a big difference. Um, she has large monitors and can see a bigger chunk of text in the format of the book you're reading the description for. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Renee is here now. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you here. So um, we're going to do a prize right now. I don't know if StreamYard is going to let me do this. Uh, I have everybody loaded in that has commented the day a video has released. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not going to fight with StreamYard on this to show the random name picker. But if you commented the day a video was released, so videos come out every Tuesday and Friday. If you commented the day a video is released, you've been entered to win some of our fabulous swag. We have our mugs, we have our journals. So here's, um, I have all the, we call it the vintage stuff now. I have all the vintage stuff. And this one, this one does not include the note, the stapler or the glass, <laughs> the glasses. <laughs> but this is our hashtag no boring books mug, the vintage version and our vintage version, version of a very well loved journal you can see. Um, and then we also have copies of self-publish and succeed and self-promote and succeed. So let me just hit this button right now and we'll see who's the winner. And it's spinning and normally you guys can see it, but StreamYard is not liking me today. So self-pub with Andy. I don't know if, I don't think I saw Andy commenting, but you are our first winner today, my friend. Um, I do not see. Uh, I do not see, nope, uh, I don't see Andy, but Andy, I'm sure you're going to watch the replay. So email Angela at team at booklaunchers.com and let us know what you want and where to mail it. And I'm going to do the next one right now too, just so it is done. And then we will go in and hopefully play with this tool. Hopefully I can get it to work over in Chrome. All right, and then this one's a weird one. <laughs> um, it comes through on my screen really weird, but uh, again, a regular commenter. So KJ hyphen ZR two K O. Congratulations, KJ! You are our second winner for today. Again, the prizes are the mug, the journal, uh, self publish and succeed, or self promote and succeed. And email Angela at team at booklaunchers .com. And if you're new around here, you may not know, but if you are outside of the United States, we will only send the books to you. Um, we won't send the mug because duty, the duty we have run into in the past is not friendly for you or for us. So um, so we'll only send the books to you because we can mail those um, in a more, a more effective way that does not cause anybody um, duty charges. So, okay, um, let me just move this all over to Chrome for you. 
one moment. And StreamYarn seems to be okay with Chrome today. So, and then I will bring this up. So the tool that I am going to um, just show you today as an option to improve your book description is the um, Kindle printer tool. They have a book description to tool that you can use to uh, create the HTML formatting. And then you can even press a button now that says, can AI make this better? Uh, here we go. Fingers crossed, everyone. All right. OK, so I think you're seeing that now. Oh, huh. what do you know? Now it's showing Firefox. <laughs> well, thank you, StreamYard. What a delight. OK, so here we go. What I've done is I just took uh, a just some version of my first book description, self-publish and succeed. And I dropped it in here and it stripped the formatting out of it. Uh, at least it said it did, although it still has bullets. And so what you can do here, I just wanted to show you, first of all, it's got different things. So you can format your editorial reviews, which is the piece underneath. Can I show you? Let me just see if you guys are seeing this. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, cool. So what we can do here is the editorial reviews are these reviews down here. And they also should be formatted. And what you want to do is ideally bold who's written the review. And um, you can also put italics if there's, I don't have a name here. You can put italics as well. So here's some italics as well. So this formatting is important too. So this will help you format your editorial reviews. You can also create different formats for different places because everybody is going to have slightly different, um, I don't know, criteria or systems that you're uploading to. So you've got Barnes and Noble and a Kobo uh, book description editor, if you will. So what you're gonna do here is most of the time you probably want to, and this is not the exact one that you just saw on mine, but let's just, just play with it here. So you might wanna bold that, and maybe you want to italicize that, and then maybe I want to bold. Well, let me bold that, there we go. Okay, and then maybe there's leverage speaking engagements. So maybe I want to italicize that. Strategically launch your book, italics. So you can see how you can play with it here. And then you can generate your code, which I'll do just to show you, and then we'll come back. So here's the code that you would then go and upload to your Amazon page. Now, let's say you wanna see if it'll make it better. So let's say, click that button that says, click here to see if AI can improve it. We're gonna tell it it's nonfiction. And let's see what it is doing. <laughs> this says, but please know that each time you use this, it does cost us a little bit, but that's okay. We want this to be free for you. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, and I don't feel guilty about that because I promote Publisher Rocket all day long. <laughs> And Publisher Rocket is one of the tools Kindle Printer has created. So it says yes um, over here. So I assume that means it has updated this description over here. Um, just trying to see where it updated. So it must be over here. So it's saying discover proven strategies for becoming a best-selling author. So this is the updated version here. So I guess when it says yes, it, it's saying yes, we can improve this. Um, don't miss out on the same strategies and tactics that book launchers clients pay tens of thousands of dollars for. Let this comprehensive guide be the key to unlocking your success as a nonfiction author. Buy now before the price changes. Well, I wouldn't put that there, um, but not bad. Few not bad improvements. So this is just a tool I wanted you to know about because it will make the formatting much easier. I have never played with their AI. Can I make this better before? So that was a new adventure. And then they have a lot of tools here book description generator, other free tools for them. Um, they have their AI book blurb generator, which, you know, which we just witnessed and so forth. So hopefully, hopefully some of you can make the most of that and benefit from a new tool. All right. While I'm in this screen, <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I was able to share this and I'm going to go ahead and give the first prize away and we'll do one other prize for all of you there. So if you haven't already participated or said hello, be sure to do that. We might do a skill testing question um, or a cool takeaway. So 
we'll figure out that. But we're going to give two prizes away, and one of them I'm going to do right now. And I think you can see. So I'm not going to choose any text. I'm just going to say draw. So there's been 12 different people have commented so far. So let's see who our winner is. Renee! <laughs> I feel like Renee won last time, but that's great. <laughs> I don't know if you did. Maybe I'm just, uh, I feel like it's been recent, but yay, congratulations. That's fantastic. So Renee, email Angela at team at booklaunchers.com and let her know. Um, what your prize is, what your prize choice is. And Angela, I know I saw some questions come in. So if you want to, uh, if you, oh, and Angela also said we have extras of my first two books. So I have a real estate investing book, which is more than cash flow. And I also have the new brand you, which was my second book. Um, it didn't sell well, but I actually think it's an excellent book. Uh, the material in there is really, really great. And I've, I've already told many of you that I plan to repurpose some of that content into a book that I will probably shoot to launch next year on author branding because the content in that book is so good. And the book um, didn't sell for a lot of reasons, which I actually shot a YouTube video on, um, which Angela will frantically go to YouTube and find the, the YouTube video on the five reasons that book didn't sell. But we also have a lot of copies of those. Um, fun fact for you on the where we got the copies of More Than Cash Flow. My parents drove down from Canada to visit and my mom my mom cleaned out her her storage facility that like they have like a little, um, I don't know, it's not a garage, but like a little storage room um, off, their, off the side of their house. And she had two boxes, two cases of More Than Cash Flow. And she's like, here, I don't want these. So she drove them all the way down from Canada for, for me. And I then shipped them to Angela. So those are well-traveled books. So when you get that more than cash flow, you can you can know that it's had it's had some good travels in its life, and it's 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 like a vintage copy as well. <laughs> so those books are also available to anybody who's won a prize or has won all the prizes they want, and they want something different. Um, okay, so um, questions from all of you. Susan's here. I'm I'm here. I'm just too tired to chat. I know the feeling sometimes. Um, I unfortunately do not have the luxury of showing up and not chatting. <laughs> I don't think that would make a very good live stream um, unless I could turn it over to Angela, but she conveniently didn't show up on video for this one. So I can't, I can't just drop it on her. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see, I think I saw somebody's comment about, um, about the call to action at the end. So I can't find that right now, but I will mention that the call to action, I, pr I prefer to make a call to action that gives them a reason to read the book. Um, uh, regardless, you want a call to action. I don't remember the exact stat, but it actually was Dave Chesson um, of Kindlepreneur because they have a heat map, they have heat map data from Amazon's page and they show, they can see where things, where people are spending time. So the heat map shows like the coloration of they're spending time on the headline, they're spending time on the bullets, they're spending time on the last line. And he's also done some research and having a clear call to action of like literally just go buy this book, increased people buying the book by, I don't know, I want to say it was five to 7%, but it, I feel like it could have even been more than that. Regardless, sometimes you just have to tell people what to do. But I like to give them a reason. And so as you saw um, the AI generator, it said buy the book before the price goes up or the price changes. I don't like that. I prefer something that goes back to the pain that is like, finally get your book done this year and start growing your brand and your business. Buy and read more than cash or more than cash flow. Buy and read, self-publish and succeed today. Um, something like that, like kind of tie it back almost um, if you've ever done any improv, you know, you kind of have the scene opener and then it's like if you can put the button on it at the end and kind of tie back to the beginning, you know, that callback thing can be really powerful. So something there that gives them a reason beyond the price is about to change uh, because price changing, by the way, could mean the price is going to go down. <laughs> but regardless, you know, something that goes back to that pain or the reason why they want to read the book right now, I think that's powerful and a good reason. But if all else fails, just read the book today will make a difference at the end. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, oh, that was Kevin's question. Yay. Awesome. And um, 
John says, I've been learning so much from you and your team. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, and Efren said, I think it said the call to action should be on the last line. That is correct. The call to action should be on the last line of your book description. So the very, very end, that is accurate. Um, all right, next question. What do we have? Okay, while we're doing that, um, I am going to give you a question. Um, oh, Katie Weiser. Okay, I'll get to that now. Um, so what? let's share your, what are we going to do? Let's share your favorite book description tip. So whether it's something I said today or something you've learned somewhere else, what is your favorite tip for writing a powerful converting book description? Let's share that. And then Angela will choose her favorite and that will be our final winner of today. All right, um, Katie, do you offer a service to review our description of an existing book on Amazon? I don't, but I think what we could do is either an upcoming deep dive or even one of these sessions when StreamYard isn't being finicky, we could do a hot seat um, because I'm always looking for ideas and content for our deep dives and our live streams and all of those things. So we could just do it as part of that. Uh, it is something we do with all of our clients, of course. And, um, you know, it's something that actually Sarah and I are doing it with our, we're doing the book marketing magic live class. And we are going to be starting a book marketing mastermind group. We have a couple other initiatives that are underway this year around book marketing. And I think doing um, Amazon book description reviews will be part of the mastermind, but it absolutely is part of what we're doing with the book marketing magic live in our week one class. We popped up one of the students Amazon pages and <laughs> I, I felt bad because we, I think she was, she was like, Oh my gosh, I, I've done so many things wrong, but we really just honed in on like three key opportunities for her to improve her description. And I think we were both excited for her because she had a lot of good things going, but there was a few areas where if she just made some changes, we're like, this is going to be amazing for you. Uh, <laughs> but it can, it can be a little overwhelming when um, two people dive in and go, okay, here, we're going to help you with your book description and give you a whole bunch of feedback. Um, but yeah, it's not a service, but it's something that I'd be happy to help you with um, in one of the live streams that we do. Um, or again, our book marketing mastermind will be open, uh, I believe, in April, and you could join then. Um, another question, Angela, or is that it? Is that all of it? Uh, and I see some cool tips popping in, so make it visually appealing. Don't just put a chunk of a paragraph, absolutely. Uh, N folds, N plus fold. Hey, welcome. I don't know if I've seen you here before. Uh, considering the pain points shows empathy. Um, tip bold the opening hook line, uh, and then use your special words in the description. Change I language to we language and you language. That's a good one. Um, Katie's was the last question. All right, you guys are going easy on me. <laughs> um, all right, so I'll just wait for Angela to choose our winner for today. Uh, a couple other things around book descriptions. I, I mentioned this, but I want to you know mention it again. Is it really has to sell your book? And what I see, there's there's two mistakes that I see with a lot of book descriptions. Uh, one, well, actually, there's three. One is that they are just chunks. I saw somebody post today. I'm in a group that I'm in, and they were like, "My book's launched today." And I go to her page, and it was two paragraphs of text. That's it. Um, and you, so she's missing that like single line at the start that's going to sell the book to the reader and that scannability. Uh, so chunks of text, which is reiterating somebody's point here, chunks of text are, um, <laughs> sorry, I just saw Susan said, I see so many traditionally published authors have terrible descriptions when it comes to formatting. Yeah. And to be honest, sometimes it's really difficult to get all the formatting for all the formats. Because if you saw um, if you saw when I was clicking, the formatting was different for each format of the book. Um, there's a few reasons why that can happen. And it can be a real pain in the butt trying to get the formatting right and having to go to different places to get the different formats right. Um, and so so I understand why sometimes they don't pay enough attention to it. And sometimes it's just you're in the middle of trying to track down, you know, getting it improved because sometimes you have to go to a few different places and wait for updates as well. So um, all that said, so the three mistakes. So the one is the chunks of paragraphs. The, the next is using language that you've heard before. And you may not even be conscious of the fact that you've heard it before, but this is a common copywriting mistake in general. You've heard some of these traditional lines that always seem to sell in general. And so 
without realizing it in many cases, you use that language in your book description. And again, you have to make your book description stand out as something they haven't read yet. You want to fit with the things they've read and enjoyed because they're probably looking for more like that. But you also have to give them a reason why your book isn't going to be more of the same. And this was one of the reasons I've talked a lot about this with More Than Cash Flow, because when I wrote that first book on real estate investing, I had read at least 60 different books on real estate investing, and they all touted passive income and they all touted how to pick an area. They all, you know, they all talked about these foundational elements. And so when I was choosing my chapter titles and my bullets, I was thinking, OK, what is different about this? You know, and I came up with things like the, the 90 second um, formula to analyze any property, you know, things like that, that are, again, even sometimes taking a common thing like property, how to choose an area, we created an acronym around that. And so then we would say the, the, and I don't remember what the acronym was. <laughs> I've left the real estate stuff behind, but there was an acumen, acronym that was like the, the green light way to choose your area to invest in, you know, something like that. So those are some of the things that, you know, looking at your competitors, seeing what they kind of say and figuring out how you can make yourself a little bit different or create that curiosity or sell a different value. That is really, really important. So it's that visual element that makes sure you don't sound like everybody else and making sure that it's, it's um, what's the word? It's got a clear reader. Um, so again, that's where I mentioned when we're talking about the uh, you know disqualification of other readers. It is okay to like scream from the rooftops who this book is for or to say who it's not for. Because I, a lot of people are afraid to do this because they're worried about the people they're leaving out. They're like, but this could help all these other people. And sure, if those people are interested, they'll buy your book anyways. But what you really wanna do is make it completely obvious to your ideal reader that you've written this book for them. And so, you know, that's where I think it's, you know, people, people veer a little bit too much to the general as well, because they're trying to appeal to a wider market. And what they do is they water down who their book is for, which makes it harder for the person who really should be that ideal and obvious reader for them to grab it. So it's okay to disqualify people in your book description and be like, this is not for the person who is not ready to do work. <laughs> Or this is not for so-and-so. This is for this kind of a person. It's okay. You don't have to do that, but it's okay to do that and it can help you stand out. Um, okay. And I've got a question from Efren and Angela says, her, our final winner of the day, oops, comment popped in and moved my screen. My favorite is Susan Montgomery's because it's applicable for any book description, not just a certain genre or subgenre. Um, I don't know which one it was though. Uh... I was trying to share which one. Maybe make it visually appealing. Don't just put a chunk of a paragraph. I see that one. So hopefully that's the one you meant. All right. So Efren, I've updated my description on three formats, e, soft, and hardback. For some reason, only my ebook description has the updated. I've tried to cut and paste the updates to the other formats, ideas. So yeah, this is where I said it. you have to update it in different places. And sometimes it just takes time. So depending on when you updated them, um, it like it can actually take weeks. Uh, it's one of the things that can drive my team crazy because somebody will email and say, I want this changed on my book description and they'll make the change right away. And then like four days later, the client writes like, why haven't you made the change? And it's just because it hasn't reflected. So depending on where the issues are, um, that would be something to email. Um, Angela, do you help with that part? Or is this something he should just email support about to get clarification? Because I know there's, it's been funky and I don't deal with it anymore. So I don't know exactly which places like with, yeah, like with Audible, you need to be uploading uh, or sorry, correcting that right in the ACX dashboard. So if your audiobook description is there. Um, and then the hardcover probably was through, I don't know if that ended up going through Ingram or not, <laughs> but you'd have to update that in Ingram Spark versus the paperback and the ebook are probably in your KDP dashboard. So it's a matter of going to all the right places and setting that up. So um, John's off to Tai Chi. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, and Angela says, contact the support team for clarification on that. So if you're still struggling with the issues, write them because they'll know the nuances of the different places. Um, and some of the reasons why some of them get stuck and whether it's just a matter of waiting longer. 
<laughs> which I know isn't a great solution, but that is sometimes what we have to do is just wait a little longer. Um, and then uh, Efren, did you go all the way through and republish the book? It may not have saved if you didn't go through all the steps. You might want to send an email to support too and check with them. Yeah, all of that uh, is our good suggestion, Susan, because it can, it can, if you haven't hit republish the book, uh, it doesn't change your date to do that, by the way. I think I saw something about, does that skew the publication date? It doesn't. You can update, little updates like that don't skew your publication date. Um, actually, almost nothing skews your publication date because that's the, the date is the date you published. So unless you come out with a second edition, that won't change. Um, all right. I think we got through it all. So thank you, everybody. We'll be back here again in uh, two weeks. And of course, I do hope you join uh, the team. Angela will be there providing support as always on Saturday, doing the deep dive on cover design trends and interior layout trends. Um, but Alyssa will be there leading the charge along with Cassie, our lead designer. So if you've seen our amazing book covers, our interior designs that are just absolutely glorious, um, Cassie is the genius behind those. Even if somebody else is working on it on our team, she's always the one that sees it and provides feedback and, and design input. So, and she's also the one I've mentioned where I say, you know, I, I give her a new font package and she's happy for like a month. <laughs> she loves fonts so much. So I know you guys will have a fantastic session with her on Saturday. I'll be at the San Francisco Writers, uh, Writers Conference. So I don't know if any of you will be there, but if you will, I will be in session 48 uh, talking about some of the things to watch out for when you hire service providers for your book. So I will be there and then also hosting, I believe, a breakfast and uh, like a table at one of the breakfasts and doing open consults. So if anybody happens to be there, you can sign up for a consult with me or join the breakfast table uh, or come to the session. It'd be great to meet you. All right. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Hope you go to the Saturday deep dive and we see you back here in two weeks. Bye.